it comes out looking so glossy and soft. We do it for all the curly girls. <gasps> he had stretched everything and he had made me look like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Lana here. Welcome back to Lana Summer Summer Time. I am about to tell you why your hair will never look like an influencer's hair. I know that that sounds really harsh, but I feel like some of you need that truth bomb right now, especially given the time of year. But right now it's January. We're all doing a bit of goal setting. I myself have set you guys a hair growth challenge and you might be doing a ton of challenges right now. And something that I used to do all the time when I was very first starting out on my hair journey, I would put my my curly hair inspirations as my screensavers, as my wallpapers, my homepage lock screen, all of that. And that person would become my inspiration and I would just be counting down the days until my hair looked like that influencer's hair. But it never happened. Your hair is never gonna look like your fave influencer's hair. And that's on period. Okay, so this video is about influencers, right? So let me just give you a little bit of a background about me, just in case you don't know. I am somebody who makes content for social media. Like I make YouTube videos and I make Instagram posts and I do that for a living. And sometimes the stuff that I put out influences people, I don't know. But when I first started YouTube, the word influencer didn't exist. And that is never what I aspired to be. Just the thought that somebody would classify me as an influencer, I'm just like, what? I did not set out to influence people. I feel like that's a bit mastermindy. It's weird to me. I have been able to have a glimpse into the world of influencers. I kind of know all of the backstage stuff that goes on. I have been on the other side of the wall. I've experienced the glitzy, glamzy life of influencing. And I'm ready to expose the trade secrets, which are the reason why your hair will never look like this. Now this kind of goes for all hair types and it goes way further than just hair it goes into makeup and skin and body and the whole facade like everything you see this literally affects everything but i'm here today to talk to you about curly hair specifically so buckle up it's gonna be a wild ride the very first thing that i want to talk about is when you actually pick an influencer who is going to be your goal or the person who you're trying to get your hair to look like right one of the very first things you need to think about is whether that person's hair type is even anywhere naturally close to yours because when i was first starting out i chose someone who didn't even have the same hair type as me and i just thought yeah my hair is gonna look like that I I was wrong. Our curl patterns were way different. That is just a very simple basic tip, which doesn't even go into like the trade secrets part, but that's just like a little bonus tip for you to get us kick started. All right, let's move on to the real tips, the real secrets. Okay, so I have 11 points that I wanna talk about and I've split it into four categories. The four categories are preparation, shooting, editing, and other tips and tricks. So we're in the preparation category. And what this means is how those influencers, models, celebrities, how they actually prepare their hair for the photos and the media that you end up seeing. So the very first thing that affects that is the products that they use. They are being sent products constantly. They are expensive. They've got amazing ingredients. They may even have a personal guru who is tailoring their hair care routine for them to get them the very best products for their hair type. The best of the best products. So I'm talking shampoos, conditioners, curl creams, hair masks, all of that good stuff. And a lot of the time they're being sent it for free. So they don't even have to use their own money for this stuff. And that's because brands hope that they that they will post about it and then it will be exposure for the brand and the brand will get more sales. So they just hope that that will happen. And that goes for myself included. There are a lot of companies companies out there who just know my name and my address which is kind of weird when you think about it but they just send me stuff like I'll just wake up and there'll just be stuff that I didn't ask for <laughs> and it's just there and I'm very grateful for it definitely very grateful for it but I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that that stuff happens and even though I am somebody who puts content on YouTube I'm definitely not even anywhere on the same level as some of these other influencers there are influencers out there with 10 times more followers than me a hundred times more followers than me and you can only imagine the type of of stuff that they are being sent and the amount of parcels they get so if i were you i wouldn't even be trying to spend as much money as that definitely just try to live within your budget and don't make yourself broke just for using the same products as some of your faves my second point is the actual preparation of their hair for the images or the media that they're about to show you so they have more time to prepare their hair because this is their job if they are a curly hair influencer or if they 
you're just somebody who has to look good for a living, they have more time for preparation. That means that they can take care with their curly hair routine and the styling part of their routine and they can do all these fancy hairstyles and all of this stuff because they have time. Like while other people are out with their nine to five or their side hustle or their small business or whatever it is that you're getting on with, other people are literally doing their hair because it's their job. When you have more time, your hair's probably gonna look like it's been did, you know? Your hair's gonna look like it's done up. It's gonna maybe look better. Keep on living your life. There are more important things to do than preparing your hair for a photo. The third tip that comes under the preparation umbrella is presentation. So when they are presenting their hair to the camera, they can choose to angle it in a certain way or to flip it in a certain way that's gonna look best on camera. Whereas if you were just going about your daily life, you can't always keep that in mind and there's not always someone there to help you. So say if you're going to a modeling shoot or something like that, there's gonna be someone who can help your hair to look best. Maybe it's an influencer at home doing it themselves. They still know their best angles and they know how to make their hair look the best. So for instance, I usually like kind of just ruffle my hair a lot because I prefer there to be more volume. I have long hair and it kind of pulls down and makes it go a bit flat, I can do that because I'm on camera. Bet your bottom dollar your favorite influencers, celebrities and models are doing it as well. And the fourth trade secret that comes under the preparation category is pretending. Notice that these have been the four horsemen of the apocalypse, all beginning with the letter P. So yes, we are on to the pretending category right now. And what do I mean by pretending, ladies and gentlemen? I mean pretending faking, pulling the wool over one's eyes. I'll tell you a little story of when I went on a shoot for a major hair brand. So, I'm so excited because this is the biggest shoot that I've ever been on in my life. I rock up to the shoot, I've done my hair, my hair is looking natural. I'm like, oh my God, my natural hair is gonna flourish, my natural hair is gonna shine. So then I go and sit down in what I believe is the makeup artist's chair. Makeup artist comes along, she does my makeup, we're having a nice little chat. And then a hairstylist comes along and starts fiddling with my hair. And I'm kind of looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm like, what you doing? <laughs> he whips out a tiny little corkscrew curler kind of thing. And I'm like, are you gonna put that on my hair? And he's like, yeah. Bear in mind, I've never been on a shoot this big before. I don't know what the protocol is. I don't really know what I am allowed to say yes and no to. Because it's a hair care brand, they're not allowed to edit the hair in post. You see this all the time with mascara adverts as well. You know you see a mascara advert and then in the bottom it says um, the model is wearing false lashes. Well, the reason they do that is because they're not allowed to edit the lashes because it's a lash advert. So they just put false lashes on. And apparently they do the same thing with hair. So they just make it look perfect with the curler. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't realize that you were gonna do that. And he was like, yeah, no, it's fine. We do it for all the curly girls. And that just goes to show that when you see TV adverts, magazine adverts with somebody with curly hair and their hair looks absolutely perfect, like perfect ringlets, it's probably been done with a curling wand. And I just hope that I never have to do that again for a modeling shoot. Okay, so right now I'm gonna tell you about the points that are in the second category, which is shooting. So this applies to models, celebrities, and actresses, actors who are on set in film sets, who are producing movies, music videos, magazines, magazine posters, anything like that, but it also applies to influencers who are just making content for Instagram. All of these points apply, so listen carefully. Okay, so point number one under shooting is lighting. So when you actually go to shoot a picture of your hair, you actually do need to think about the lighting. I feel like everybody knows about lighting and how it can make a difference to your face and your makeup when you're taking a selfie, but I feel like not many people realize how different it can make your hair look. So right now, I feel like this is my usual filming setup. I only ever have two lights, so I have one right there and I have one over there. And I feel like my hair never actually looks its best in this kind of lighting, but it just looks okay. I can deal with it that's just how my lighting set has to be because i don't have a lot of room i would like to have a light over there on this side but there's a wall there so i can't do that another type of lighting that i do like is when i go to the window and it's a nice sunny day you get some nice lighting from the window you know you know where to find the best lighting you know where to find it i'm going to show you the difference in the selfie lighting okay so as you can see this angle is the same angle as what the camera is shooting at right now you can see that my hair looks kind of shiny kind of glossy however if i just turn to the side now my hair looks like frizzy it's picking up all of the frizz on this side and then we come back around here again 
and suddenly the frizz is minimized. Another thing that comes under lighting is the flash. So when I'm taking pictures outside in the daylight, my hair can look absolutely horrible. It looks like it has no definition. It looks like it's full of frizz. But as soon as I wipe the flash on, it makes all the difference in the world and it adds a whole bunch of shine to my hair, which I do feel like you can see in real life, but it just doesn't pick up well on camera. That's just a little tip that I wanted to give you guys. Okay, so the next tip is about the cameras that you use. So I kind of touched on this in the previous tip, but basically different cameras will pick up your hair differently. So I take a lot of my hair pictures on my phone because it just makes my hair look shiny. I don't know what it is. I use a Samsung S10. I'll Take a pic right now. And if I take a video on this phone of my hair, it comes out looking so glossy and soft. And honestly, I don't know what is more truer to life, like whether this is picking up more truer to life or whether my phone is. Okay, and the third thing to think about while actually shooting the pictures is that influencers and models take hundreds of pics. 99% of those are gonna be duds. They're gonna be unusable, they're gonna be unwanted. And it's gonna be that 1% that actually gets posted that you actually see. Yes, every Everybody does this, it's not just you. And the fourth trade secret in this category is posing. So I also kind of touched on this in the first category, but I just want to go more in depth on this one. So while you're actually shooting the pics, you can move your hair around so much and you can do so much with it. And a lot of these models and influencers and celebrities, they know their best angles and they know exactly how they want their hair to look. So you will see a lot of the time people will do maybe like a length check or they'll show their hair growth process from behind. And what what you don't see is them kind of tilting their head back to make their hair look longer than it was or you will see people kind of doing this and then kind of putting their hair back and suddenly I have so much more volume, but my hair looks like this on the back. But that's kind of a common thing that you see people doing for photos. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> or what you will see a lot of is people kind of reaching up behind and kind of putting their hair up forward all kinds of crazy things during the shoot that's gonna help their hair look a certain way, which then ends up being your screensaver that you think that you can achieve naturally when you cannot. Okay, and another thing that I like to do is I just like to flip my hair over once in a while because I do have kind of flatter hair. I don't get the most volume in my hair. And if I just flip it every 10 minutes or so, then I can start to have more volume again. So that's just something I like to do that you guys don't always see me doing, so yeah keep that in mind okay we are now on to the third category which is editing this is a doozy make sure you don't miss these ones also if you are enjoying this video so far then drop me a like and if you hate it <laughs> then you can always thumbs down but i would appreciate it if you subscribed and turned on your notifications so that you don't miss any more videos from me also leave me a comment down below and tell me if there's anything that you do with your hair for pictures that you feel like other people would be interested to know so the first point is in the editing category is Facetune. You've heard of Facetune, but have you heard of Hairtune? All right, so Hairtune is not a real app as far as I know, but you can use Facetune for your hair and I know that people do it. So let me tell you a little story about when an up and coming photographer booked me into his studio for what he told me was a new curly hair series that he was shooting. Obviously, I was excited about that because any opportunity to showcase curly hair, I was there for it. So I do my hair all nice and natural. I turn up to the shoot, we shoot a bunch of pictures. I think it was, we took about 300. And he told me just to pick the ones that I liked and then he would edit them and then he would send me the final edited images. So I picked the ones that I like. I had to whittle it down to about 10 from about 300. And then I sent those off to him and he edited them. <laughs> So I'm thinking that he's just gonna brighten them, he's gonna color grade them, you know, just very basic edits. Because I didn't really see that there was a lot that really needed doing in those pictures. I liked them. Well, I get the pictures back and no word of a lie, he went ham. This guy had tried to give my hair more volume literally by just like stretching my hair out like this in edit, just stretching my hair out. And he had paid no regard to what that did to my face. You know, screw the face. No one cares about the face. Screw the face out. Like he, he did not care about the face. He had stretched everything and he had made me look like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> oh my God, what is that? 
<laughs> I still had the original image that he originally sent me before it was edited. And I was like, do I look like that? Do I look like that? And I looked at the original and I was like, Whew, okay, I don't look like that. And I compared the two and I was just like, it's very clear to see what he's done. He's literally tried to give my hair more volume and he's just stretched the whole thing. So I emailed him. I was trying to be really polite about it because I was actually angry. I was like, um, I think that there's been an error because you know, you've kind of warped my face in this image. And he was like, oh, haha, yeah. But he did nothing about it. He didn't care. He just wanted the volume in the hair. So I was like, right, okay. We didn't really resolve it. I went ahead and I posted the original image because I liked the original image. I did not use his Jabba the Hutt Star Wars image. And he went ahead and he posted that on his page. And I was just like, maybe he forgot that my hair wasn't as voluminous as he thought it was or something. Maybe he thought that I had a different hair pattern and that my hair was gonna be a lot fuller. I don't know what he thought, but obviously my hair didn't make the cut in his opinion and he wanted it to be bigger. I mean, there's ways to do that without stretching the face. You know, like I feel like a, somebody who knew what they were doing would have been able to do that without stretching the face. But either way, my point is, is that you cannot trust the images that you see because they have been edited a lot of them have been edited definitely not saying all of them but i'd say the majority of people probably aren't editing their images like that but a lot of them are and this is a professional photographer let's just be fair i don't think that all editing is bad sometimes an image just needs a few tweaks here and there and i'll be the first to admit that i do use editing software on some of my images i definitely use a bit of facetune here and there because sometimes i just like to change the color i definitely change the color a lot they recently brought in a new filter called sunlight which is so good because i'm from england and as you know we have been sunlight deprived now for like a good two or three months it's winter time and never see the sun my pictures always look so gray and horrible so i just like to use that filter just to warm things up a bit and just make it look like i don't live in a hole but something that i do specifically for my hair is i use the detail tool on facetune so that's basically a sharpener tool and it sharpens everything up and really points out the details which I feel like really helps to highlight the definition in my hair and it's definitely not like creating definition it's kind of like I feel like the definition was already there but for some reason it's just not really presenting well on camera in the image it's kind of getting a bit lost with everything Whew. I'm not gonna lie when I first started this video my hair was still a bit damp and now it's drying out a little bit and it's getting a bit more volume so but it is just getting a bit drier as the time ticks on because I've been filming for about half an hour okay so now we are in the miscellaneous category so I'm just going to mention some other things that influencers and celebrities do that maybe you didn't realize they did, which may be why your hair is not looking like theirs. So the first thing in this category is when influencers fill in their hairline with eyeshadow. I feel like a lot of people do this. I don't really do it because I feel like it's just kind of messy. I don't know. You can kind of see my hairline. My hair is looking kind of thin I don't know it's something that's quite common that a lot of people do they actually make specific products that will do this better than eyeshadow will but a lot of people just use eyeshadow I was reminded of this by Riley Isaac because she posted it on TikTok It's just a very common thing and I'm just happy that more people are drawing attention to it. Other people are going around thinking that their hair is just thin when actually your hair is fine. And that's okay because it's normal. And this kind of epic thickness that you see in people's hair, sometimes people do have really thick hair, but sometimes maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's just eyeshadow. All right, and this miscellaneous tip number two is kind of editing a little bit again. Well, it's, it is kind of editing, but not in the same way as what I mentioned before. So this is editing something that is completely not natural into your pose. I remember there being a big trend of this with people using emojis all over their hair, and that was one thing. I've done it myself in more subtle ways that I tried to make it look like it wasn't edited in. And the best example of this is my New Year's Eve 2020 to 2021. We celebrate New Year's and I posted a pic of my hairstyle. So the majority of that hairstyle was all real. I really did do all of that with my hair and I really loved it and it looked spectacular in real life. But I could not for the life of me find a 2020 hair slide or even a goodbye hair slide. So I just 
looked up a rhinestone PNG, like a transparent image of a rhinestone. And then in an editing app, I just put the rhinestone in the shape of goodbye 2020. So I feel like a lot of people liked that post for the rest of the hairstyle, but I feel like some other people maybe liked the post because of the hair slide. And yeah, the hair slide wasn't real. Another thing is that so many influencers only post their good days and they don't post their bad days. Not even bad days, just regular days. Like me, for instance, my hair on a day-to-day -day basis is pretty much in a bun the entire time. It's probably tangled up. And like today is wash day. So I filmed the majority of my videos on wash day. And that's partly because I'm a human and I just feel like I wanna look my best when I come on camera. But then I do realize that that maybe gives you an unrealistic expectation. So I just wanna set the record straight and let you know that your hair is fine just the way it is. Just know that all of these tricks do go on. And maybe that's the reason why your hair doesn't quite look like how your face hair looks. So yeah, all in all, the message that I just wanted to give you in this video is that you don't need to be too hard on yourself. Like definitely don't look at all these influencers and set that as your goal without considering all of these other factors. So yeah, that's everything from me. I feel like this video has been a really fun video to film because I've been able to share so many trade secrets and behind the scenes information with you. I feel like it's actually gonna be really helpful. So if you feel like this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it. I don't know, sharing's kind of awkward. You don't have to. Just leave me a comment and subscribe subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything more from me i will see you over on instagram i hope i'll see you in the next video bye yeah.